What's up guys? Staying here from Rocky Creek. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Today, we have got to get these egg laying pullets out of the garage because they have reached the point where they smell like awful. So one thing that most people who purchase chickens or decide to get into chickens don't understand is that when you get them and they're so cute and they're so little for like the first week or two you're like oh they're so cute and it's not too bad you clean them out once in a while but then it reaches a point where it's like oh my gosh what is that smell and it smells horrible the best i can equate it to it's like you left old yogurt sitting out in the hot baking sun and then you decided you're gonna just hold it right here and smell it all day. It's a very sour, foul smell. And they've reached a point now where I have to clean it out almost every day or it's just unbelievable. But they are now almost fully feathered. We're gonna have a sort of warm day. It's gonna be about in the 60s. Their heat lamp is super high and I've even cut it off periodically at times to see how they're doing. And now I think we're at the time, we're gonna be outside most of the day today and we're gonna go ahead and start to slowly integrate them both to the outside climates, but also to their fellow chickens that they're soon gonna be living with. Guys, our house may be super small, so I don't really have like a man cave, but instead of man caves, the thing that I have that drives my wife crazy is I have junk piles. But these junk piles pay off for me in the long run usually. The key word is usually. Sometimes it is a pile of junk. But this right here, or this one right here, depending on number I got, is the best thing I got for these chickens when I integrate them. So guys, I'll end up integrating these chickens in in two ways. Um, first, they'll be in their crate outside of the chicken pen. And we'll end up covering this with a tarp. But with it being a nice sunny day out today, I want to let that sun get on them to provide them some little extra warmth since this will be their first time being outside. The only real concern I have for them when they're in this crate is that the slots are slightly wide. So if a predator such as a raccoon um, they're more the type that like to reach in and grab. Um, they are still susceptible to them. But what I usually try to do to address that to a certain degree is that when I put the tarp on at night, not only to keep the water off of them if it were to rain, helps keep the wind off, but in terms of that predator, I will block it off on all three sides and I will put in a makeshift roosting bar in the back. But I have found that the chickens naturally will go to the back of the the area that I have the three sides covered with the tarp, I guess because it gives them a sense of security. And unless the, the raccoon was to pull that tarp away, then they tend to be safe. I've never had a chicken get attacked while in this crate. But then again, I've never had a predator get my meat chickens and that happened this year. So I'm a little more on edge this year because I had that happen this year that I've never had. But we're gonna go ahead and hope for the best and we'll get these guys settled in. And hopefully if temperatures get up fast, we'll get these guys integrated a whole lot faster. But let me go ahead and make sure my tarp at least fits good and then we'll get the chickens. Oh yeah, so this tarp's gonna be plenty big. It comes all the way down to the sides and I even have some extra from there, which will secure it down both with bungees and I'll put rocks along the outer edge of it. 
Um, trust me, we got plenty of rocks here, so there's no shortage of rock. Um, and the rock also helps, like I said, to keep those predators away. So unless the chicken's all the way up here in the front, I shouldn't have to worry about that. And I've done this, this will now I think be my fifth time I've utilized this, this method. And every time it's worked fantastic and I've never lost a chicken to either the weather, another chicken being too aggressive, or to a predator getting a hold of them. So fingers crossed we'll continue that trend. I'm gonna go ahead and get a makeshift roosting bar and then we'll start putting these guys in here and see how they acclimate. So guys, one of the nice things about using a dog crate, when you wanna use a, a roosting bar because it does make them feel more secure and gets them off the ground, is with those slats that you have, you just get a basic little piece of, I would think this is probably about a half inch by half inch, at most one by one, which I don't think it's quite that big, but it's just a rod and just slide it through and it will rest on the metal grate, which makes it super easy. You don't have to drill or anything. It's just literally slide it in and you're ready to rock and roll. It's Q. Q, you gonna be nice to these new birds? There's about five of them just like you. No, you, you like being the OG? You gonna turn your back to us like that? I'm not sure how well Q-tip. Q-tip's either gonna love or hate having some similar birds like her i'm trying to think maybe that diva in her makes her want to be by herself and she don't want anybody to show her up time will tell so before we start dealing with the psycho birds trying to get them out as you can see meat birds are doing good uh they're raising up just fine they're now this is probably about their fourth day of being with us give or take um and they are we haven't lost one yet so these cornishes definitely seem to be doing much better than what we got from tractor supply. So Myers Poultry, you did good by us. And as I said, they're psycho birds. So let's get ready to round these jokers up and give them a little more space. Maybe they'll like having them extra space and they'll calm down a little bit. Okay, let's let's turn let's turn it this way so it's easier for you maybe. Okay. Alright. And you don't have to hold it super tight, you just gotta have it partially closed, okay? There's one of these polishes I really like how it looks. Good. Holy moly. Oh, it's not a moly. Oh. Olive eggers and stuff are a lot easier to catch. These daggone Polishes are just crazy. Yeah. The Polishes, the black ones, or the puffy headed ones? Well, the Polishes are the puffy headed ones. See, look, the black copper moraine, I can just grab it, no problem. Easter agar or the olive agar, no problem. It's the Polishes that are so hard. They're in this Target box. You'd have thought Target shipped chickens. Okay. Right here. You set them in. Put it in. Come on, I'm going to keep them coming. I got a little assembly line going here. Olive agar. Can't let them out. Ah, ah, crazy Polish. Yeah. What? Careful with the wings, okay? Make sure you don't. You do really good with them. Just when they get a little crazy, you had that one bent up a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna try and get out. All right, go ahead. When they come towards the door, I gotta shut them in. They're all freaking out right now, but I think they're gonna like being on the ground. Now it just flew out of my hand. There's another black copper moraine. Look at the feathers on their feet. This one is the, my favorite one. Look at that polish. The gray colors. I don't know why it's gray. I don't know, but I like it. So y'all can see the French black copper moraine right there with the feathers on its foot, growing in gray. Polishes are all pretty much very the same. We got this one awesome looking gray Polish, oh, gray Polish right there. And then the rest of them are, they seem to be white crested blacks, just like Q-tip. And then we got our two lonely olive eggers in the back there, the only brown ones, there's one right there. But you can see these guys have grown well. Y'all look at that, that's love right there. I don't know what it is, but the pigs will lay along the sides of this chicken pen, and I've seen numerous chickens do this, and they'll just peck at the pig's back, and they love it for whatever reason. You are so lazy. Olivia and 
Oh, there's the other one pecking Henry now. We're just going to consider the chickens our natural pest control for the pigs. Don't got to worry about fleas or ticks on them as long as you got the chickens nearby. Guys, y'all can see all I do is knock it out and for the most part it's clean. It's not that the stuff gets so wet. They just, they get so nasty towards the end of their, their time in the brooder. It just gets, I don't know what it is. It just gets to smelling funky. So I'll leave their brooder right there for right now. After every batch of chickens that I run in a brooder, I always give the brooder a deep cleaning. Um, I have some disinfectant spray that's safe for chickens that I'll use. I'll also clean it with uh, soap and water and then I'll let it dry out in the sun and let the UV rays from the sun help disinfect it as well. It's very important because you never know what one batch of birds may have from another batch of birds. And the last thing you want is for some kind of a disease or something like that to, to remain in your brooder, especially if you might brooder chicks quite often and you have to use that brooder a lot. So I will leave this one outside before I go move it to where I usually keep them because if I keep it right here, which is close to where I'll clean them, that's my reminder of that one has not been cleaned yet. So make sure you're cleaning your brooders in between batches of chickens for sure. Carry this feed down for me. Yeah. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try not to use their little little great thing down there on the ground. We're gonna try not to use that first and see if they'll do just fine with it on the regular ground. But we'll see. I'm really liking that gray polish though. He looks pretty cool. I say he. It's supposed to be a she. It better be a she. All right. Let's see. Water. You got the feed. Mm. And some feed. Now the only problem is. With these grates, these things are just big enough where these almost can knock over easy and drain out. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. And if that becomes a problem, we'll move that round grate into there. And then eventually what I end up doing is I migrate these guys to a hanging feeder. And I'll just run the uh, carabiner and some twine or string or chain down to both a feed and water that'll be off the ground. Because as they get a little bit bigger too, they're going to knock this thing over like crazy. And it's going to create a mess and waste waste of food and water so we'll see how they do with it though but we may migrate to that sooner than later henry you extra lazy today brother what are you doing man oh you just soaking up the sun huh oh get your belly rubs oh how's that feel you can give a little peck peck you can give him a little peck peck you want a little love too girl no don't bite my rubber boots they're not steel toed like my my leather ones, they'll hurt. There you go, girl. You like that? Oh, jeez, you're about to knock me over. All right, you be good. I'm going to go check on your soon-to-be boyfriend, husband, whatever y'all want to be. So about the gray broiler chicken, um, it's still doing fine. It's doing good. It's by itself still. Hopefully, we'll get those Cornishes out here to her, him. I'm not sure what it is yet. Uh, sooner than later. But on a good note, I can speak to the hardiness of the bird because the last two nights... We got hit with a cold spell. Highs were about 40. There was pretty good winds, but at night, it got down into the 20s. Animals' waters were froze, wind was blowing, and the bird was fine. And it's a pretty small bird still. But I don't see the bird, I think it's roosted up. One thing I've learned with the gray broilers compared to other broilers is they do roost like a typical chicken will. Yep, there it is. I'm just telling everybody about how tough you are survived the attack and now you're able to get through the cold weather no problem so i do like that that gray broiler does roost up because i feel like it had those others roosted up earlier um, in their time in the coop of course they were pretty small then probably less chance that a predator would have either noticed them or tried to attack them at that point i know dude you're getting impatient look look not everything is all about you i know oh you're gonna scratch like a dog I know you really think in your mind you are the star of the show, but you got to understand there are other people and other animals here on this property other than just you, okay? Now, I know, but you are still my favorite. I will admit to that. You're going to be a dad soon, 
so you got to act like you're supposed to. Hopefully you'll be a dad soon. We'll see. Your skin's dry, brother. We're going to have to get you, get you some moisture. Good God. You're so heavy. Oh, scratch your belly. You scratch your belly. You'd be good, brother, man. Well, guys, hopefully those chickens will do well. Hopefully we can get them moved into the actual coop area here very soon. But what we'll do is we'll leave them where they're at currently for about a week. Then I'll migrate them to inside of the coop pen, still within their crate. And then we'll kind of migrate it from there to the actual coop. But that's just going to wrap things up for today. We got some friends coming over. We're going to have us a little bit of a cookout, cooking up some fajitas on the Blackstone. So we're going to enjoy some time with some friends and family. But until then, for my man Mater and myself, we appreciate you guys coming along. Y'all be good. And as always, we'll see you here very soon on our next episode. Y'all be good, guys.